This video is brought to you by World of Warships. In the 1950s, the United States Navy built a strategic bomber flying boat with some pretty incredible features. The Martin P6M Seamaster was primarily touted as a high-speed mine layer. Critically, it was also to serve as a strategic nuclear weapon delivery system for the Navy at a time when the Soviet Union and its aviation projects were freaking out the US more than ever. And there were even plans to turn it into a nuclear-powered civil flying boat. Yet the Martin P6M Seamaster, which was six months from entering service, never actually did. Why is that? Why was such a highly touted flying boat plane finally axed by the Pentagon in August of 1959? After all, this was hardly a project stuck in its design phase or development hell. Its prototypes had even taken to the skies with flying colours and the factories were ramping up to produce a fleet of 12. This is the lost legacy of the last true flying boat, the Martin P6M Seamaster. By the early 1950s, the US Navy was decidedly annoyed and a little alarmed at how the US Air Force had stolen the march in post-war aircraft development and production. It especially lagged behind the Air Force in terms of strategic bombing duties in the event of a long-range strike on the Soviet Union. And so the Navy devised a plan to strike back at the Air Force dominance in the Bomber Aviation Department with what was the Navy dubbed its Seaplane Striking Force or SSF. This force was to compromise jet-powered flying boats capable of long-range strategic nuclear attacks, as well as conventional bombing, mine laying and reconnaissance flights. The Navy was convinced that the use of large seaplanes would be excellent for its strategic bombing missions, given that they would free up US forces from airfields that had fixed runways that could easily be targeted by enemy strikes. Also, it was believed that offshore Seamasters would be capable of flying far enough to strike virtually every important target within the entire Soviet Union, although many analysts later dismiss these claims as wishful thinking. The Martin P6M Seamaster was to be built by Glenn and Martin Company, which of course is the predecessor to the second half of Lockheed Martin today. The Martin design was chosen over the prototype submitted by Convair as the centerpiece of the Navy's big, bold plan to take on the Ruskies. The Navy was especially optimistic of the plane's capabilities to lay mines from the air, with much excitement about how the plane could lay scores of mines in the Black Sea right under the noses of the Soviet Union. The Navy touted the Seamaster as being the integral part of its newfangled anti-submarine warfare system. And this is what they came up with. Before we dive into that, I've got to tell you about today's awesome video sponsor. You can join 44 million players in World of Warships for free and on PC. Take part in team-based sea battles that require different strategies and tactics. You can even play with your friends in Division. And boy does their selection of ships put my channel to shame, with over 400 beautiful 3D designs that are completely customizable to sail through stunning weather-changing landscapes. Make your choice of five different classes from destroyers, battleships, cruisers, aircraft carriers, and the dreaded submarine. There are also new missions and events frequently. Previous events include Godzilla vs Kong, you can have Godzilla on your ship or have Kong as your commander. Other events include Azura Lane or if you're brave, battle the giant monsters from Big Hunt. To play, download World of Warships using the first link in the description. Use the promo code BOOM to get for free 200 doubloons, two ships, St. Louis and premium ship MDEM, 20x Restless Fire Camouflage, 2.5 million credits, and 7 days of premium account. Let's get back to the Navy's secret weapon. 
You can think of the Seamaster as the seagoing variant of Boeing's B-52 Stratofortress, the hulking bomber that was the pride and joy of the US military at the time. This plane was to have a crew of four with the following characteristics. A length of 134 feet or 40.9 meters, a wingspan of 102 feet or 31.27 meters, and a height of 33 feet or 10 meters tall. That meant that the Martin Seamaster would be almost equal in size to the B-52, except decidedly more elegant looking and even more versatile. Its total wing area would be 1,900 square feet, or 180 square meters. The wings were swept at 40 degrees and had distinct anhedrals that drooped. This design feature allowed the wingtip tanks to perch atop the water and serve as stabilizing floats for the craft. The aircraft would also house an aerial refueling probe a rotating watertight bomb bay, flight control and autopilot systems, and a high visibility canopy, as well as a probe and droge kit for its conversion to a tanker when needed. It's also worth noting that the Martin P6M Seamaster would be refueled and rearmed by submarines or small navy craft, which you might remember I talked about in great length in my previous submarine video, the longest here on the channel that you can watch right here. So what could the Seamaster deliver in terms of performance? In terms of power and range, the plane would be powered by four Pratt & Whitney J75P2 turbojet engines. These engines were mounted in two nacelles on top of the fuselage near the wing roots. The engines were mounted in such a way that the intake of water into them could be prevented. This type of power would allow the Martin P6M Seamaster to attain a maximum speed of 686 miles per hour or 1,104 kilometers per hour at an altitude of 20,000 feet, or that's 6,000 meters for those people that deal in metric. Although most of the time it would be cruising at around 535 miles per hour or 861 kilometers per hour. But far more importantly, its reconnaissance range would be quite extensive at 283 miles or 3,352 kilometers. For reconnaissance sorties, it could be fitted with a simple, massive, high altitude reconnaissance camera weighing in at 4,000 pounds or 1,800 kilograms and 27 small M120 photo flash cameras but its combat range would be significantly shorter at a still viable 750 miles or 1,210 kilometers. That range would be possible with a payload of 30,000 pounds or 14,000 kilograms of armaments. 30,000 pounds or 14,000 kilograms of armaments, you might imagine, is actually quite a lot. And you bet that the boffins at the Navy were keen to arm this plane to the teeth. The Martin P6M Seamaster could carry two 20mm cannons in its rear remote operated turret and 122 mines comprising seven different MK models, as well as two MK91 bombs weighing 3,500 pounds or 1.5,000 kilograms each, and one MK28 bomb weighing 1,800 pounds or 817 kilograms which you can imagine makes this plane the perfect nuclear delivery system. An interesting aspect of the design for the P6M Seamaster was a watertight rotary bomb bay, which could be flipped over on its fore or aft axes during flight. This nifty action would expose the bomb racks on the inside of the hull, filled with its combination of bombs, mines and other ornaments, or perhaps cameras, as required by each given mission. Bombs or aerial mines could be released at speeds of up to 600 miles per hour or 965 kilometers per hour, meaning an open stretch of sea could be quickly filled with deadly mines in a matter of moments. Ordnance could be quickly replenished from openings on the upper side of the hull. This rotating bomb bay design had been a trademark of the Glenel Martin company and a variation of the same feature could also be found on the company's XB-51 and B-57 bombers. But it's one thing to design the perfect seaplane and another to build it. 
it was time to test the ultimate seaplane concept. The first of the Seamaster prototypes, the XP6M-1, had its first secret test flight over Chesapeake Bay off the coast of Maryland and Virginia in 1955, and the results were promising. Although it was found that the jet exhausts were too far inboard and scorched the fuselage when the afterburners were deployed. But that would be nothing compared to what happened next. A test of the same prototype later that year went really wrong. During the test, there was a malfunction of a horizontal stabilizer, resulting in the aircraft pitching down too sharply. The force caused the engines to tear away from the wings, which in turn compromised the hull. The aircraft broke up in flight, and all four crew test members were killed. Coincidentally, this was just two days after the death of the aviation pioneer, Glenn L. Martin, who had created the company that bore his name and built the Seamaster. A second prototype of that first model design had its tests conducted until May 1956, but it had the same flaw. A test flight to conduct special vibration checks resulted in the aircraft executing a tight loop before it broke up. Luckily, this time the test flight crew managed to escape through a tube-like hatch located just behind the flight deck, and all of them survived. So they went back to the drawing board and came up with the YP6M-1 pre-production model. They angled the nacelles by 5 degrees from the fuselage in order to prevent the scorching which had arisen during the very first test of this aircraft. And they also implemented several different measures to ensure that the aircraft itself would not break up during flight. In its own tests, this version of the aircraft achieved Mach 0.9 which was even faster than its much vaunted cousin, the B-52 bomber. So to recap, there were three different prototypes of the Martin P6M Seamaster. The XP6M-1 had two prototypes, both of which crashed during tests. And then there was the YP6M-1 pre-production model, of which six were built. The Navy decided to move forward and was preparing the aircraft model to enter service with a fleet of 12. The P6M-2 was scheduled to have eight production models built. Navy crew and pilots started training with the model, flying them all over the country, and were keen to get them into service with a deadline of only six months. But then the worst happened. The entire program was cancelled. What had been the context and plans of the Navy's commissioning of the Martin Seamaster P6M provides an interesting insight into the Navy's inner workings and preoccupations at the time, and perhaps gives us an answer of why the ultimate flying boat was cancelled. Initially, the Navy had ordered a fleet of 24 final production Seamasters in addition to the six that had been built as prototypes. But endless delays and an accompanying steep rise in costs meant that the order was reduced to 18 of them. That number was then further reduced to only eight. The Navy stated that these eight would operate as a single squadron from a new sea drome at an unknown location. However, even those eight aircraft proved too expensive for the Navy, and so only three production Martin P6M-2 Seamasters were ever actually built. However, the Pentagon nixed the project on its head in 1959, and the Navy, as fickle and opportunistic as any military division, immediately turned its attention to the Polaris Submarine Launch Ballistic Missile Program, leaving behind in its wake the legendary Seamaster flying boat. You also have to add in the fact with these rising costs that there were two crashes and four deaths during the development of the program. To what extent those overall and not so great results of the test caused the Seamaster project to be shelved cannot be fully determined. However, they probably didn't help its cause with the top brass at the Pentagon. So what became of the Seamaster? which, after all, had actually been built, tested, and implemented into Navy procedures to that point. 
Glenn L. Martin Company, the aircraft company that designed and built the Seamaster for the Navy, tried to modify it into an eight-engine civilian airliner with the rather coy name of Sea Mistress. The company also considered other variations on its concept plane, such as a nuclear-powered flying boat or a supersonic seaplane, but none of those ideas ever took off. All that remained of the original Martin Seamasters were two tails, a fuselage section and wing floats, which are now found at the Glen M. Martin Aviation Museum in Baltimore. An enterprising Martin employee scrounged up four of the aircraft's wingtip floats to build himself a catamaran. Rather tellingly, the Glen L. Martin company itself gave up on building aircraft altogether, which means that the Martin P6M Seamaster was the final aircraft ever designed and constructed by that same company, at least before its integration into the beast that is Lockheed. That was a pretty exciting little adventure into what I consider one of aviation's long lost mysteries and something that really could have been, especially the part about it turning into Seville travel. If you want to be able to support the channel here today, then you can join the Patreon. You can be featured in the credits, right? These fine fellows will be at the end. And you can also help me come up with ideas for the next project. So if you're sitting around and wanting to know how you can be more involved in Found and Explained, then click that link down below. Again, thanks so much for watching.